Okay, welcome to this session for generative, generative AI for beginners. Uh, my name is Dave Glover. I'm a cloud advocate. I'm based in Sydney, Australia. And uh, this is for lesson six, building search applications. Alrighty, so what we're going to cover in the session, we're going to look at what semantic search is. You might have, a term you might have heard banded around. We're going to talk about vectors and embeddings. Again, a term that you might have heard, but just kind of what the difference is between them. We're going to talk about vector stores and we're going to cover demos. So the goal of this session. So ultimately, at the end of the session, you're going to have a better idea how vectors play a crucial role in enabling effective semantic search. So hopefully, that's what you're going to pick up out of the session. Now, when I first uh, started talking and, and learning about generative AI, um, one of the terms that was banded around a lot was semantic search. And I must admit, at the time, I didn't really know what semantic search was. But a bit of digging around, I kind of got the general idea of how this works. And hopefully, this will help you as well. So semantic search is really kind of intent-based search or boiling down to what are the, the core concepts you're thinking about and you want to look for. So take an example. If you talk about my dream watch, now if you did a keyword search, you would end up with results which were about dreams and which are about watches, which is probably what you weren't, what, not what you were looking to find. Now if you were doing semantic search, what that would do is that will boil down to the concept probably of my ideal watches, which is what you're really thinking about. And then you'd find things about ideal watches and you'd probably expand on that search term. So the key thing about semantic search is around intent or around the concept that you're looking for, as opposed to keyword search, which would find dreams and watches. Now, semantic search is kind of like a really pivotal point or pivotal concept when it comes to building large language model applications. And you'll often find these applications take a big dependency on what we call semantic search and embeddings. Okay, so you've heard about the term vectors. No doubt you're learning about those in uh, university or school. And um, you might have heard the word embeddings. You might be thinking, well, what's the difference? Because often they're used almost um, uh, sem uh, semantically, or, uh, sorry, almost hand in hand. Um, so vectors and embeddings, what are they? So an embedding is a special type of vector that is generated by a large language model that has semantic meaning. So ultimately, what it's going to generate when you go and send a piece of text off to an embedding engine, it's going to return back a vector. And that vector will have a representation of what the semantic meaning was of that bit of text you sent into that um, embeddings engine. Now, there are lots of different embedding models. Now, the ones you've probably heard of would be like the OpenAI embeddings model. So there's text embedding 3-small, which is a new uh, model that's just come out. Uh, dash 3-large dash is again a new one. Uh, you might have heard of text embedding ADA-002, dash which has been a very popular one. Now, these are by no means the only embeddings models. If you go off to Hugging Face, um, you'll find a whole um, series of embedding models and you'll find rankings of performance and how well these things do. But to give an example, and in fact, for the for this, for this the example I'm going to be showing you, the example in this lesson plan, it's using text embedding ADA002. And it will return back a vector, which is 1 by 1536 dimensioned vector. So that's what you're going to get back. And obviously, that's pretty difficult to kind of visualize. And you can't really imagine what that is. Um, but anyway, that's the size of the vector you get back. Now, the other concept that, you, that you'll often hear banded about when it comes to vectors and embeddings is around this concept called nearest neighbor search. And what that's doing is that you've, taking, you've got a, a collection of these, um, these vectors which have been created using these embedding models. And what you want to be able to do is you want to say, OK, well, I've got this collection of, of embedding models. Now I want to go and find I've got another piece of text. I want this is my search term, my dream watch, for example. And I want to go and find in that collection which other vectors are closest to this concept of my dream watch. And this is the concept you hear called nearest neighbor. And you'll also hear, hear the concept of cosine similarities. And cosine similarities is a formula that you can use across a collection of vectors to go and find a vector which matches closest to the vectors in this collection.
and basically calculates how close one vector is to others in multi-dimensional space, in this case, one by 1536 dimension vector. And basically what you get back is you get a ranking of relatedness of vectors or semantic meaning against your vector that you're looking for. Now to kind of visualize this, if you think about we've got, most of us we can we can happy with two dimensional vectors and three dimensional vectors. So you think about, um, we've got on the left hand side here, we've got two dimensional vectors. And we can see here, okay, well, I've got this, this was, this blue dot here was um, the vector for my search. Well, you could very easily say, well, okay, these other vectors around here, these points that are represent these vectors, you can see they're close. But you can see this black dot over here and this blue dot over here, they're not so close. So you can see that they, if you were to do a cosine similarity, these, these, this, these other dot, these dots here would be um, closest. The same thing here in three-dimensional space. Now, I'm using an application called Octava, um, which is quite a nice application for just visualizing things. And you can see I've got um, 10 vectors here. And we'll go and run this. And just to help visualize this, so we just move this around. You can start seeing, well, I've got these vectors in three-dimensional space. And we can, most of us, we can see X, Y, and Z. And we can visualize that pretty straightforward. And again, if I said, okay, well, this red dot here, this was the red dot that represents my search question, my, the vector that I want to search for, you could see around here that, okay, well, you can see that these dots here are most likely related to the, the red dot in the center. So kind of you can, again, visualize this. So we can visualize two-dimensional space. We can visualize three-dimensional space. But clearly, we can't really visualize too much more than that. We certainly can't visualize a 1 by 1536 uh, based vector. So hopefully, it kind of gives you a bit of an idea. And you can just kind of extrapolate that a concept of saying, OK, well, I can understand two-dimensional, three-dimensional. There's a formula which can help me go and work out what it would look like, what would be the nearest neighbor using cosine similarity. Now, what you find is with, again, this concept of vectors and embeddings. If you were to go and create a, a, an embedding for boots, shoes, and socks, they will create vectors which are in multidimensional space related. They'll be sitting in the same multidimensional space. And over here, the concept of a camera, well, that's not the same concept as shoes, socks, and, and boots. So it's going to be in a different dimensional space. So again, when I when I said I want I want to go and buy some shoes, for example, it might be a query, um, you would create a an embedding for that, and then you would go and search across these vectors, and you'd find okay, well, these shoe socks and um, boots would be the closest um, vector in multi-dimensional space. Hopefully that was clear. What's going on? Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is that we've got we've got these vectors that we've created from embeddings, and we want to store them somewhere. So you, again, you'll hear about vector stores, and these are just um, uh, effectively like an index or like a database, but they're optimized for storing vectors. So you hear um, products like Azure AI Search is a, uh, a vector engine, uh, Redis, Postgres, Pinegone, and there are a lot of others out there. There are about maybe, maybe 20 or so vector stores out there in the marketplace today. Uh, but the, again, the popular ones are things like Redis and Azure AI Search. Now, the demo that I'm going to show you, and a great way of prototyping some of these things, is actually to do this just in memory. And a super easy way to do this was just with a Pandas data frame. And this is what the demo that I'm going to be showing you, and the, the demo that you'll find in the repo, is rather than having to worry about uh, back-end data stores, um, for prototyping and just playing around with ideas, a Pandas data frame is a super easy way to get up and running with this. But clearly you wouldn't do that. If you were pushing this application to production, you wouldn't run this application from a Pandas data frame. You would use some sort of back-end uh, data service like Azure AI Search. Okay, so we've got a bit of a demo, and I just want to show you a bit of how this works and how this, how this, how this data set was built. So the, the example that you're going to find in the repo for this, uh, for, this, for this talk is actually taking the transcripts from a whole lot of YouTube videos. It's actually um, content from the um, AI search, the Microsoft AI search uh, channel, which is on YouTube. And what we did is we took around about 300 transcripts from various, from various talks, and we 
embedded those. So we created embeddings for them and we put them into, and in this case, into a pandas data frame and we can use that for searching. Now, I just want to talk a bit about the concept about what you do around this. So, so you've got this transcript. Now, whenever you've got large data sets, it could be a transcript, it could be a PDF document, it could be data from a Word document, or wherever that, where this bit of text is coming from. Um, what you typically do is you break that down or you do this concept called chunking. So you take this video transcript in this case, and what you do is you chunk it down. And, you, and the chunks are kind of, the way you think about this is what fidelity do you want for the search? Do I want about a search in five minute increments in that video transcript or three minute increments, for example? And that will de de determine how big the chunking size is. Now, the other concept you do with chunking, and again, you'll find various libraries which help you with chunking, is you also tend to do an overlap. Um, and the idea behind this is often it's, it doesn't make sense just to cut off a chunk at an arbitrary sentence or things like that. You might well say, well, I want a sentence or two from the next chunk. And that kind of gives you context, gives you kind of better context. And you can see in this chunk, in these chunks here, I've got a bit of, you can see this red text here, is actually the beginning of the next chunk. And again, you'll find that there's a second chunk down here. The red text is the beginning of the next chunk. And again, that's done to provide better search, semantic search. So then what you go and do is you go and send each of these chunks off to an embedding. In this case, we're going to send it off to text embedding ADA002. That's the model we're using. And that's going to return back um, a vector. Remember, it returns back a 1 by 1536 dimension vector. And then what you do is you put that into a store. Now, in this demo, what the store is actually just going to be a JSON, uh, a JSON file. And we're going to load that up into a pandas data frame. So now I want to go and search. Okay, in this case here, I want to go and learn, I want to learn about R Studio and notebooks. So you remember my data set was um, the AI show, and it's going to have lots of tom lots of content around Azure and notebooks and Jupyter Notebooks and cognitive services and things like that in R Studio. But I want to find particularly around R Studio and notebooks. So the way you do that, that's my query. And then what I would do is I would generate an embedding for that query. So again, I'd send that bit of text off to the, the um, in this case, text embedding ADA model, and I get back my 15, 1 by 1536 dimensioned vector. And then what I would do is I would do a nearest neighbor or cosine similarities uh, against my store. Now, back in data systems like Redis and AI search, they have the capability to go and look at all vast amounts of vector data and then find the nearest neighbor. That's kind of what they're optimized for. We're going to be using a pandas data frame and we're going to be using cosine similarities. And then we'll go and do that. We'll go and find um, the closest vectors which match that data. And I get back the results and you, you typically get back a ranking to say, okay, well, we think this is 0 0.094, 95% closest um, ranking, and again, you'd see various rankings of the um, chunks of text that most closely match the, by semantic meaning the result set in the data set. Okay, so hopefully that was fairly clear. So what I'm going to do is pop across to Visual Studio Code, and in the repo for this lesson, you'll find there's this Jupyter Notebook. And what this Jupyter Notebook is going to do, it's going to load up various things, but the most important thing about, well, the couple of things that's going on here, we're going to be calling um, the OpenAI text embedding ADA model to go and generate a, an embedding for my question, which we're then going to use against the, um, the set, sets of embeddings for the, um, the transcripts. Okay, so the first thing we hear, we're going to put up the endpoint. We've got a, the API key, API version. This is just information that's needed for Azure OpenAI. And then I'm going to say the model is text embedding. Now it's super important that the that the when you're going to embed your question, you're using the same model that you use to to create the vectors um, for the transcripts. So those models are going to match. And then this is the the data set that I'm going to load up into memory. Now I'm going to skip through some of this reasonably quickly. Um, you can again look at this in your own time. But here goes a function for the cosine similarity. And there's a NumPy um, um, 
formulas in here for working out our nearest neighbor. So we're going to come through here and ultimately what this is going to do, we're going to load up the data set and then we're going to sit in the loop and we're going to ask for a query. And this is, so we're going to run this. So we're going to run this Jupyter notebook and that's loaded. And it's going to be, I'm interested in talks about uh, R Studio and notebooks. Okay, so that's going to be my query. So that's that's a question. So remember what's going to happen. This is going to be sent to the embedding engine. And what it's going to do is create an embedding for that. And it's going to go and check all of the embeddings that I've created for their transcripts. And it's going to bring back the videos that are most similar. And a nice one that I've tested out already is in this one here. So the second one here, data science with machine learning. In this video, Rafael is going to talk about data science and machine learning. And you'll see the similarity is 0.84. And if I go and click on this link, what you're going to notice, it's going to start talking about, it's going to take us straight to that transcript and to the place in the video. You see what happened there is that, I'll just go back. We'll link on, we'll click on that link. So you see the beauty of this is taking that complete transcript, we chunked it up into, I think, three minute uh, chunks. I did my query, I converted that into embedding, then I looked across my pandas data frame, I looked at all of the embeddings or the vectors I've got sitting in there, I found the closest, and then and inside that data set, I also had the time that said, okay, they're gonna start talking about R Studio and notebooks at this particular time in this um, YouTube video. So that's kind of how this works. So hopefully that makes sense and gives you a bit of an idea of how the application works. Okay, so with that, we've got a couple of resources. So we've got the search application I've just shown you. So you'll find that, that link in here. So you, you'll find that. And there's also a really good um, set of uh, Microsoft Learn content and a particular one there about understanding embeddings in Azure OpenAI search or service. And then have a read through that. Again, you're going to learn more, but hopefully that's giving you enough to get you going and learning about how to go and build search applications using um, embeddings, vectors, and cosine similarity and using nearest neighbor uh, to go and find the relevant content in your data sets. Okay, thank you very much.